Hi everyone and welcome to this tutorial. Uh, to start off today we are going to be opening up Wireshark. I've just got it open here and we are going to want to run a packet filter before we start changing up the columns views in Wireshark. The easiest way to actually build out your columns is to go to a HTTP site instead of a HTTPS. So we are going to start running. So we're capturing from the ethernet that had the traffic. And we're going to open up Microsoft Edge or any browser you're using. And we're going to go to H. We need to probably go bomb.gov.au because this site is not secure. So now that we've opened it up, we can jump back, come back in here and check. And we have all the different requests going on. So now we can press stop packet and we can just close down this window. So now that you've got this set up, you're ready to start going through and changing up the different columns and views within Wireshark to make it more efficient for you to work. So now that you've got some information here, you're ready to start changing the different headers up here. So we're going to come up here. This is the columns bar. You right click anywhere and press column preferences. In the preferences here, you have all the settings for Wireshark. But for now, we're just going to be sticking in the appearances and the columns bars here. The first two columns I find really helpful to add are the source port, unresolved, and the destination port, unresolved. Um, and you just press this little button down here to add them or remove them and you double click in here to change the name. So I'm going to change it to source port and dest port. You could spell them fully out, but because they are actually information that is quite short, I find it's easier to have a short title and you just want to drag it up until it happily goes into that spot. So now when I press OK, you can see these two columns here. So you can see the different ports for coming from and going to. So for example, in the HTTP get, it's coming from this port, going to this port, and then when it goes to collect the information that's swapped. So that's really helpful to see that sort of stuff, especially if you needed to check what the source port was. Also, when you get started, if the information is sitting on the right, you can right click and press align to left. For example, you could change it to the right. I find it's best to have it on the left so that way if it ends up being, for example, too much, you get to see the dots and you can check if there is more information, essentially. I just find it to be a lot easier because you can also shrink it down like that. So now it's time to add in custom columns. So these next custom columns are really helpful if you are searching for HTTP information. So you want to start off with coming up into applying a filter. You want to do HTTP.request, press enter. So now we have all the request ones here and it's very easy just to select and we can start. So I really like having a column that has the request method. So you can come down here after you've put in this request search and find request method and you can right click and you can apply as a column. So now you look here, you've got the request method as a column. It is also, also over in the information, but it's really handy to have it as a request method there. The next column I like to add is the host. So you right click, apply as column. So now you've got your get requests and your host requests. So it's really helpful to be able to see that information right there, especially if you're going, for example, right here, there's a post one. Now, the next column I find really helpful to have is the handshake method that is occurring in the, the website so that you're sniffing and checking. So you can come up here and you put in ssl.handshake.type equals equals one. And when you run that, you have all the handshakes going on. And it's pretty much only a client hello that I can see from when I went looking on this website. So there can be varying information, especially when you're connecting with HTTPS, which we will look at further in this tutorial. So all you need to do is you need to come down here into this bottom frame and click transport layer security. You want to open it up and you can 
right click and do handshake protocol but you just get a tick and I find that's not really helpful for me when I'm looking through I just want to be able to see the information really clearly in the different headers and so I don't have to go look through the info to find what info I needed so what you can do is here and click the handshake type right click and apply as column so now you have a column for handshake type and you can change the size of these and shrink them down as I said before when you make them align to the left it makes it a little easier for you to see the information really quickly so you still have the column over here for your info and it will show a lot of this information but having it sorted into the different columns makes it a lot easier for you to officially look through the information without putting in filters at first obviously filters make it easier but just to starting off it's very helpful to have this information here another helpful column to add can it be the server name so while you're still in the previous view or you can come back into that previous view where you had the SSL handshake type equals equals one come back down into transport layer security into handshake protocol and you want to scroll down until you find extension server name which is here then you want to go into server name indication request and you want to find the server name so if you're looking through information, you want to be able to easily see the server name without clicking through all this, you can right click it and add it as a column. So then up here, we've got the column here to show this information. For example, we can see that we entered into the website BOM, that they are using static hotjar to manage information going on on the website. Uh, that we used Google to get there. And I think they are using Google Analytics as well for their website and all the other information that's loaded up. It's very helpful to be able to see this. Um, obviously, it won't always benefit you depending on what you're doing, but these columns can really like improve your time searching through this information and make it much more efficient for you. A final column I wanted to show you that could also be beneficial is one for the HTTP response. So you want to type in a filter HTTP dot response and you'll get up all of these response ones. So you can come down here and you can open up hypertext transfer protocol and then open up this HTTP one and you can select the status code. You can right click and you can add it as a column. And now if we come up here and we scroll over, we now have a status code column for us to show the information on the status. So now you've got all these different columns. You can change them to be any different size you'd like and you're ready to start searching through your information. So this is now the completed view of the, all the columns that I've added in. Now you can really do whatever you want with this. You can add in any columns you need depending on what information you're trying to look for and what works best for the information that you are going through. You can add anything in, like you can add the destination, you could add the type, for example. I can just right click and put that in there. Um, you can really turn this into whatever you want. So just go for it, have a try around, figure out what works best, and that is setting up columns in Wireshark.